Last night on War and Remembrance. There's a letter from Natalie. It was forwarded by the Red Cross. Why do we have to go to SS headquarters? <laughs> the Red Cross has no record of any releases from the model ghetto. Why don't you just tell me what you're doing about getting them out of there? What did they do to you? Fight the war, Byron. Ah! Try to put your wife out of your mind. Where's the captain? We're on the third train on the 17th. It's a mistake. The hole and the breath go on the transport. We can't wait for a glaring anymore. Shut your three million mouth and get out of here, man! And now. Sie werden sich sofort einreihen und im Kreis herumgehen. Wer ausgesucht wird, begibt sich sofort zur Verschonungskommission in der Ecke und bekommt eine Nummer. Marsch! Los! Rei und Glied, hier alles zusammen. Ja. Eine in den anderen, ja, wir oh, nehmen hier den Neue. Und zieht los, bleibt nicht stehen. Warum marschieren? Los, weiter gehen. Ja. 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 
Can't you count? Can't you count? The count, count, count is low. All are in low. What's the matter with you all? Are you all idiots? Are you all spoons? In preparation, the U.S. has shipped to the British Isles a staggering million and a half servicemen and five million tons of invasion supplies and equipment. Some 320,000 different kinds of items, from guns and ammunition to cigarettes and chewing gum. And stacked high in a corner of a camp in Dorchester, uncounted coffins. In General Eisenhower's words, England has been transformed into the greatest operating military base of all time. And in the words of their English hosts, the American GI is overpaid, oversexed, and over here. <laughs> All right, go on, 
meet you. Go on. What are you doing here? I've come to see you, of course. Me? But uh, how? Well, you're with the Jedberg. How do you know about that? I'm with the Air Ministry section that's arranging to drop you in. I saw your name on a schedule. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it Lady Byrne Wilk yet? Well, no, he's recuperating from an air crash in India. Oh. I'm on my way to Stoneford to see him now. You got time for a drink? No, afraid not. I've still got 40 miles to go. <laughs> Not just a few minutes, anyway. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful to see an old face. Not that your face is old. <laughs> well, I was having very shaky second thoughts about volunteering for the Jedbergs. Told the board, you know, the reviewing board, straight out that I was a high-strung coward. They didn't know quite what to make of that. Asked me. Why'd I put in for the duty? So, I uh, gave him my song and dance about the Jews. And they packed me off to a psychiatrist. <laughs> and for some reason, they passed me. Must be damn hard up for Jeds. For heaven's sake, Leslie, stop being so hard on yourself. Tell me something. You seeing much of Admiral Henry these days? Admiral? What are you talking about? Yeah, it's Rear Admiral now. I mean, ablaze with the uh, braid and battle ribbons and stars. I ran into him at our embassy. Here? In England? Yeah. Really? Has he been here long? Why don't you ask him yourself? Try the U.S. amphibious base at Exeter. Mm. That's where he said he was going. Walk me to my car. It's a million years since Paris, isn't it? Oh, you know, I did some drinking last month with uh, Phil Rule in London. He got an utterly gross. Falling down drunk. I know, it's sad. Well, Victor wrote me that Natalie's waiting out the war in a Czech ghetto. Yeah. We've all gone a long way. But at least we had Paris. We were young and happy and full of fun. Well, we... I think we've worked awfully hard at being Ernest Hemingway characters, altogether too rash and raffish and mad. I prefer my memories. Till we meet again. Good luck with your mission, Leslie. I do very much admire you. Take him high office, Henry. Thank you, Admiral. I had a time tracking you down. Will you by any chance be in London on Thursday? Yes, I will. Then come and have dinner with us. With Duncan and me at Stoneford. It's only half an hour from town. How do I get there? Have your driver bring you to the Bushy Park Depot. And I'll pick you up at four. Then we can talk for a bit. Duncan sleeps in four to six. Doctor's orders. How is he? Bit poorly. There'll be a few others for dinner, including General Eisenhower. Telegraph Cottage is country places nearby. Exalted company for me, Pamela. I don't think so, Admiral Henry. <laughs> That's two stars and only temporary. Oh, Lee Mallory will be there too, Eisenhower's Air Force commander. Well, I'm sure you're very busy. I'll see you Thursday then at four. Goodbye. Goodbye.
as the situation on the Russian front deteriorates and the Allied invasion in the West appears imminent, the conspiracy to overthrow Adolf Hitler takes on a desperate urgency. On his way to a most important meeting is Count Klaus Schenkman-Stauffenberg. Recently severely wounded in North Africa, Stauffenberg has lost two fingers of his left hand, his right hand at the wrist, and his left eye. Ah, oh, Stauffenberg, come in. Am I very late? Not at all. I have news. Lieutenant General Hans Speidel, Field Marshal Romo's chief of staff. It was he who has called this meeting. Retired Lieutenant General Ludwig von Beck, former Army Chief of Staff, long-time leader of the plot. Dr. Karl Gerdler, Mayor of Leipzig, long-time conspirator. Dr. Hans Gesevius, renegade Gestapo bureaucrat. He has been involved in all plots against Hitler from the beginning. Oh, you've heard that Hitler has fired Munstein. Oh, yes. I'm in good company. And it keeps getting better. And your news? Rommel will stand with us. Are you absolutely sure? No more hedging. His exact words were, I believe it is my duty to come to the rescue of my country. So when it happens, you'll be right there in his headquarters to keep him in the picture. When what happens? I too have news. General Fromm has requested me as chief of staff of the Home Army. The Home Army? It's riddled with our people. Yes, and it has standing orders to take over the country in an emergency. One code word, Valkyrie. But the Valkyrie emergencies are strictly defined. An uprising of foreign workers, a, a mutiny, will create the emergency by killing Hitler. Where's your access to Hitler? General Fromm's chief of staff reports to Hitler on home army readiness and rosters. Hitler uses home army units as reserve formations. I'll be seeing him once or twice a week. How will you do it? with a bomb. A bomb with an acid time fuse. All I have to do is crush the fuse to start the acid down to the explosive. And you can manipulate such a device under pressure? With only three fingers? Yes, I can. I'll kill him, and I'll fly back here to direct the coup d'etat. A plane will be arranged. I'll pick my occasion when all three of them are present. Hitler, Goering, and Himmler. Your chances of killing all three of them are non-existent. Maybe you will kill Hitler, but assuming that you do, that will only be an excuse for Himmler to murder all of us. You are against it. Why are you at this meeting? To prevent madness. The German people are still fanatically behind him. So is most of the army. At best, you can only succeed in making him the martyred Napoleon of Germany. And we... We shall be the ones who stabbed him in the back. It is all too late. Let the enemy prevail. Let them hang the scoundrel. All right. You've heard Harder's view. You've been in this as long as he has. How do you stand? I have always preferred a rest. But if there's another way, kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. 
Rommel wants him arrested. He's against killing him. You're not wrong. I'm asking you. Kill him. All right, Alda. Are you with us? Yes. I'm with you. Kill him. It is decided. Smashing, Admiral. Well, the big gold stripe helps. Actually, you look a bit war-worn. So totally American, they should carve you on Mount Rushmore. You think so, Pam? You look pretty good yourself. It's felt like being out of uniform. How long will you be here? I'm flying back tomorrow night. So soon? Overnight in Washington, and then on to the Pacific. So, tell me about Duncan. He's not doing too well, I'm afraid. Some sort of tropical infection got into his bloodstream. Well, there's some good news in my family. Madeline married that young naval officer. Wonderful. Pleasantest turnaround in my life there in New Mexico. Byron got his bronze star. By all accounts, he's an excellent submariner. Janice is in law school. There's even some hope about Natalie. The Red Cross is sending a neutral delegation to her camp soon. So maybe we will get some word from her. If the Germans let uh, the Red Cross in, the camp can't be too bad. And Rhoda? Rhoda's in Reno, getting her divorce. She actually went through with it? She actually went through with it. Well, tell me about your promotion. It came from Admiral King himself, face to face, right after the President ordered me on this mission. The Admiral said he'd even throw in a battleship division. Battleship division? Yeah. It's absolutely marvelous, a division. He said it was my reward for good work. He said I could fight a division if I had to. There's two ships, Pam. Two of our best. The Iowa and the New Jersey, and I eat. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, wait. That was the best thing that could possibly happen to my career. A monumental surprise. Of course, that's a carrier war out there. The battle wagons mainly bombard the beaches. I'll probably just. Uh, Ride around in fancy flag quarters till the end of the war, initialing documents, and looking pompous. It's terrific. It's absolutely, utterly, bloody flaming terrific. I agree. It's okay. I wasn't aware that any of our fellows had gotten in there. I haven't seen any intelligence on it. 
Technically, General Eisenhower, I was a Lend-Lease observer, but I did send a supplement on combat aspects to ONI. Okay. Make sure you get that stuff in the Office of Naval Intelligence for me tomorrow. Yes, General. Henry, you know the Russians. Once we go, will they attack in the East? Harriman's has assured me the attack is on, but uh, there's plenty of skepticism around here. Well, there goes, sir. That's my guess. The Russians are uh, politically unpredictable. They truly don't see the world as we do. That may never change. Still, uh, I think they'll honor this military commitment. Why do you say that, Henry? Self-interest, of course. I agree, Henry. The time to hit the other fella is when he's got his hands full. They're bound to go. Also, the sense of honor that they do have. Well, if they've got that much in common with us, eventually we'll be able to get along with them. We can build on that. I wonder, General. Look at the trouble we have getting along. We have the English language in common. It only seems we do. <laughs> Mrs. Summersby, I drink to that. And to you. You and Admiral Henry will forgive me, won't you, if I just pop over there for a while? Of course. See you later. No doubt you deeply disapprove of Kay Summersby. Or do you bend your rules for great men? All I know about her is what meets the eye. As a matter of fact, and I know both of them rather well, I'm sure that's all there is to it. Charles, you can leave that there, thank you. Pity you couldn't be more broad-minded about your wife. I tried to stick it out, Pamela. You know that. Rhoda chose differently. You froze her. Will she be happy with her fellow, though? I don't know. I've met him a couple of times, talked to him. He didn't act happy. At this point, I think he's doing the honorable thing. Poor Rhoda. Isn't that the dress you wore that night at the Savoy? I'm surprised you remember. How could I forget? Why didn't you answer my letter? Just a word, any word. And why did I have to find out by chance that you were here in England? Do you hate me that much? I wrote the gallant goodbye letter. I wrote the refusal to take no for an answer letter. I wrote a lot of letters. Tore them all up. I don't believe in begging a woman to change her mind. I'm not sure that begging does any good anyway. Besides, I'm not very good at it. All right, Pam. What's it all about? Your letter couldn't have been more horribly this time. I've been wretched ever since I wrote to you. When Sloat said you were here, it was the biggest shock in my life. Seeing you is incredibly, incredibly sweet. I told you in Moscow, and I'll tell you for the last time, I love you, not Duncan. Now, there it is. I've said it. Now, talk. Well, speak up. Will you have me or won't you? Tell you what, Ben. I'll think about it. Oh! <laughs> Careful! You're shaking Mount Rushmore. Well, I'll shake it down, that damn stuffy Yankee monument. What is this? A little while ago, you turned me down. What's changed? I never really thought it would happen, and now it has. And here we are together, not separated by the whole planet. I'm so happy. Oh, 
have to hurt Duncan. Can't be helped, it's my life. Amazing. Old Rhoda said that all you needed was a little wooing. She said that. Wise woman. But I've never gotten it and I never would have. Lucky I'm such a forward slut. Pamela, look. That war on the Pacific may take a long time. The Japs are still raising a lot of hell out there. If it comes to a fleet action, I'll probably be in it. And they may wind up on the short end. So? What are you saying? That I'd be prudent to keep Duncan on a string, something like that? I'm simply saying that you don't have to make up your mind. God knows I love you and I want you. But remember what you said in Moscow. Remind me. That these rare meetings of ours generate an illusion of romance. A wartime thing without substance. I'll gamble the rest of my life. It's a lie. <laughs> I have to tell Duncan right away. He won't be surprised. Hurt, yes, and... Oh, my God. They weren't long, were they? We haven't arranged anything, any. Call me at the Air Ministry at 8 o'clock. Now, for God's sake, kiss me. As Operation Overlord continues to build momentum, Adolf Hitler lays plans to counter the coming assault on his impregnable Atlantic Wall. and partner in the conspiracy to assassinate the Führer. make a much stronger line to the north. He who holds Rome in the eyes of the world holds Italy. I will never give up Rome. Never! Absolutely right, my Führer. The Channel Invasion map. Yeah. 
They will land here. Normandy? It is three times as far over the water as the Pas de Calais. That is why it will only be a diversionary force. Their main attack will come here, Pas de Calais. The short, straight route across the channel, and then into the Roar. Of course, we will keep an eye on Normandy, but this is where we will squash them. Piles of dead Americans stinking up the French coast. <laughs> that can be the finisher to that crazy cripple Roosevelt. He'll lose the election and, with luck, end up in jail somewhere. Or perhaps some patriot will shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, you agree, mein Führer, that the place to oppose the invasion is right at the beaches? Rundstedt disagrees. It's a question of how we deploy the panzers. I intend to hold them on a strong defense line inland until the invasion main body is ashore. But then, bag the lot and slaughter them. But once they are ashore, Rundstedt, with their total air superiority. Just a minute. My Luftwaffe will rise to do battle. There's merit in both your views. It all depends on the situation at the time. Therefore, I shall take operational control of the Panzers. Well, I have very urgent business to attend to in Cherbourg. How are the divisions in Hungary? Two divisions are leaving tonight for Italy. Good. With those two, and two or more from the home front, two or more blocking divisions from the home front, we will stop their entry into Rome forever. Let the Anglo-Saxons bleed themselves to death trying to break through. What about the home army report? Stauffenberg. Never mind. I have no time now. I have guests for lunch. Read the report and give me a summary after my nap. Stauffenberg. Come to my office. Well, all best? Yes, immediately, Herr Marshal. June 4th, 1944, D-Day minus one. In Eisenhower's own words, the mighty expedition is tense as a great human spring, coiled for the moment when its energy will be released. And it will vault the English Channel in the greatest amphibious assault ever attempted. General Dwight D. Eisenhower needs a minimum 24 hours lead time to launch or postpone Operation Overlord. Although he will consult with his Supreme Headquarters staff, the decision will be his alone. The wind in the channel currently is west-southwest, force five to six. That's Chief Meteorologist of Overlord. 
Group Captain J.M. Stagg. To sum up, this huge storm system developing to the eastward of Iceland will produce low cloud, high wind, and formidable wave action at the invasion sites. Chief Air Marshal Sir Arthur Tedder, Eisenhower's Air Chief for Overlord. Conditions for close air support? Cloud cover may be down to 200 feet all day, or lower. Impossible. Admiral. Admiral Sir Bertram Home Ramsay, Commander-in-Chief of the Allied Naval Expeditionary Force. I could, perhaps, land your forces, but I can't speak for accurate gunfire support. If you can land me, I'll go. General Sir Bernard Law Montgomery, Ground Commander, Gentlemen. Allied Armies. Large units are already at sea. Further delays would prove horrendous. It would prove horrendous the other way. Without that naval gun cover and close General support. Omar Bradley, Commander, U.S. First Army Group. We have two more days of the right moon and tide. Yes, but no guarantee of better weather. Nonsense. Thereafter, a delay of weeks. A stand down now for the troops would be catastrophic to morale. And to secrecy. And we all know that Rommel is hardening up Normandy like fury day by day. Lieutenant General Walter Beadle Smith, Eisenhower's chief of staff. Precisely why all those troops in the first wave need all the air and naval gun support that we can give them. Postponed for 24 hours. I shall turn back at once to formations on the Irish Sea. General Eisenhower's quarters. God, the general just lay down. Light reading puts me to sleep. Or helps. You should try the occasional glass of whiskey, like me. Much better for you. Well, I've always taken more out of whiskey than whiskey's taken out of me. So, the supreme climax comes. Africa's cleared, India's been saved. Battered Japan recoiled. Stalin's driven the Germans from his country. We've taken Rome. We're masters of the sea and air. For our immense amphibious enterprise. The monster Hitler is doomed. Not just yet. The whole operation hangs on the thread of five divisions hitting the beach against Rommel and the toughest soldiers on earth. Hitler has as many as 50 divisions ready to strike the West, 10 of them panzers. The Germans have had four years to fortify that coast, mine it, booby trap it, and they're masters of that. It's a terrific gamble, Mr. Prime Minister. If those five divisions are crushed on the first day, it's all over. And it can go either way.
I'm in this with you until the end. I... But I knew it fails. Will we go down together? Get some rest. Gentlemen, I'm sorry to say that the conditions that we predicted for the coast of France are raging over there today. If we go on, we'll be having a major disaster right now. Group Captain, you said there's been a development. Yes, an almost freak occurrence. An unforeseen break has uh, shown up, moving eastward. It'll be over the channel tomorrow, giving relatively good weather. Oh? Uh, for how long? About 36 hours. The long-term prediction. Still not good. Storm systems clear to Canada, coming our way at least for the next three weeks. Group captain. Tomorrow, at 6.30 a.m., when we would start landing, what will the weather actually be at the coast? To answer that, General, would make me a guesser, not a meteorologist. With 36 hours of endurable weather, we can land the troops and hold the beachhead. Aye, Whisker. If you landed the first of several waves, and then um, weather halts the build-up, it'll be easy meat for the Germans. I know that. I don't like it. Consequences of delay justify great risk. Okay, we go. June 5th, 1944. Dawn. With the Supreme Commander's order, 175,000 men of the first wave and more than 5,000 ships of every description will put out to sea. It is the greatest invasion fleet ever to sail the oceans of the world. out of the question. Yes, certainly through next week. That will take us to the 15th. Oh, we can still do a lot of mine laying off Normandy. Excellent. Get me on, Yes, I have. With your permission, I'll drive home today and spend my wife's birthday with the family. I have an appointment with the Führer tomorrow. Oh? You still want to talk him into deploying the panzers at the beaches? Once that no matter how we deploy them, we've got to get them out of his operational control. 600 miles away from here in Obersalzberg. That's crazy. Indeed. 
I agree with you, 100 percent. Well, good luck with the Führer. Tell your wife for me. Happy birthday. Do that. Thank you. 4.48 p.m. General Eisenhower visits the troops of the 101st Airborne. This is a wonderful thing you're doing, General. Lee Mallory is predicting 50% casualties for the 101st Airborne. 50%. He wanted to cancel the drop. It blew me, Gus, yeah, Chief Marshal. I hope you're right. In order for the landing to succeed, the 101st must secure those causeways. General Eisenhower. Ike! Excuse me, sir. Go right ahead, sir. Each hour approaches, the Office of Strategic Services prepares to drop Jedburg Team Maurice, the last of more than 90 three-man squads behind enemy lines. Their mission? Organize local resistance to confuse and harass the German defenders. We're ready. 30 seconds. Okay, Mr. Sloth. Your team's going. Okay. American. Welcome to France. Marquis? Of course, Marquis. Oh, I am Claude Gallini of Chantilly. Am I ever glad to see you? Hey. All of you. Bienvenue. Bonsoir. Uh, Bonsoir. Bonsoir. <laughs> Let's get out of here. And on? Yeah, I keep getting around. There's all sorts of reports and more coming in. Get me Rommel. Eh, so many of these in the Wusters. Zeigen Sie mir das. Nein, auf der großen Karte zuerst.
Yes. Yes, Spider. Airborne troops. Parachutists or gliders. In what force? Where? Oh, any naval activity? What's the weather like? What are you sending to oppose them? Good. Good, call me with any more news, but I'm on my way. Is it the invasion? Most unlikely. Normandy. An airborne diversion? Still this Eisenhower. He's not a gambler. This weather? It is a surprise. Maybe he's putting his head in the nose. your birthday together. The loveliest of my life. This recording is not for broadcast until we have the landing confirmed by Eisenhower. That's right, sir. You know, I've been thinking, boss. You took office early in 1933, so did Hitler. Now, 11 and a half years later, you meet head-on at the Normandy coast. It almost seems like destiny. I believe in destiny. Also in getting on with a thing. We're ready, Mr. President. My fellow Americans. What are you writing, General? Just another draft of the landings announcement. Not exactly. An alternate draft. Things in the Sherbourg Cave area have failed to gain a satisfactory foothold, and I have withdrawn the troops. Any blame or fault attaches to the attempt, it is mine alone. Just in case, I don't want any mistakes about blame. What will give you? I'll never use it. Yes. Yes. Yes, Admiral Ramsey. Good. That's very good news indeed. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, Jim. God, yes, put him through. General, it's Lee Mallory. Admiral, let me call you right back. I've got the Air Chief Marshal on the other line. Eisenhower here. Thank God. The 101st. Lee Mallory, Ramsey's reporting naval bombardment has begun. The first wave is ready to launch. Not a single vessel was lost in the crossing. Not one. Lee Mallory, congratulations on your splendid air operations. Hey, my greatest moment in this war, maybe my life, just happened when Lee Mallory said the 101st has gone into action and fewer casualties than expected.
Americans. Last night when I spoke with you about the fall of Rome, I knew that troops of the United States and our allies were crossing the channel in another and greater operation. It has come to pass to success thus far. And so I ask you to join with me in prayer. Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor to set free a suffering humanity. They fight not for the lust of conquest. They fight to end conquest. They yearn but for the end of battle, for the return to the haven of home. Read them straight and true. Give strength to their arms, stoutness to their hearts, steadfastness to their faith. They will need thy blessings. Their road will be hard and long, for the enemy is strong. He may hurl back our forces. Some will never return. Embrace these, Father, and receive them into thy kingdom. Success may not come with rushing speed, but we shall return again and again. Give us faith in thee, faith in our sons, faith in one another, faith in our united crusade. And with thy blessing, we shall prevail over the unholy forces. I will not wake the funeral. He was up very late. Then at least release the four panzer divisions, either to Rundstedt or to Rommel. No. The Führer has reserved control of the panzers. It is he who will release them. Anyway, this looks like a diversion. Sucking the panzers into Normandy may be just what the enemy is after. One must respond to massive landings, airborne troops, thousands of ships, thousands. <laughs> Panicky rumors started in the beach pillboxes. Totally unconfirmed. We will continue this at Klesheim Castle. Klesheim Castle. The British and Americans are pouring ashore. And we are going to take luncheon with the Hungarians. Take a sedative, woman, and come along. under supreme control. And my secret weapons are already on the launching sites. So yeah, unspeakable terror will soon rain down on England. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> We've got them where we can hit them. They've come up against a curtain of steel and fire. We're squashing them into the ground. Splendid, mein Führer. Splendid. Mein Führer. We have been in touch with von Rundstedt. And mein Führer, Führer Rundstedt is requesting release of the Normandy Panzers to his operational control. What for? It's all a fake, this landing. We're ready for them. When they make their main attack against the Patricolet, then my panzers will get to work and slaughter them. Mein Führer, 
You astound the world with your Napoleonic flair. What about a little lunch? Mm -hmm. It is only I who am confined to vegetables. <laughs> This is madness, Yoda. One of us must fly to the front at Normandy, see for ourselves, and then make the Fuhrer respond. If possible, we should fly today. General staff are forbidden to fly. But he is in a very good mood. Ask his permission. I shall. Don't worry. Though I'm sure you are overreacting. Three o'clock is afternoon. Right after lunch, he took a nap. When he woke up, he finally released two Panzer divisions. Two? Only two? That is totally inadequate. Inadequate? Do you know what has happened since you left Birch's Gardens this afternoon? The Allies have driven past the beaches at four locations. Here at Aramanche, here and here at Lyon, and here at saint mer Glise. We had them pinned down here earlier at Viaville, but they are breaking out with reinforcements constantly pouring us off. So? He still believes the main attack will come in the Pas de Calais. <laughs> you must drive to the front immediately. Take back a first-hand report. Perhaps that will change his thinking. <laughs> Don't get captured by the paratroopers. Nothing compared to this. The dive bombers, the bombardment from the battleships. I have never seen such slaughter. General, the war is lost. Not quite, I hope. However, I believe I have seen enough. Right, driver, back to the airfield as fast as we can go. been flitting about, haven't you? I have been there, Yodel. I have seen it with my own eyes. Now, have you talked to the Fuhrer about moving the 15th Army from the Pas de Calais? The opportunity hasn't arisen. Maybe I'll get a chance to mention it at the Situation Conference. Mention it? You must demand it. We cannot contain the beachhead. They have landed more than 100,000 troops, thousands and thousands of tons of equipment. Eisenhower is building up his forces like, like, like an avalanche. I 
am going to tell the Fuhrer if it costs me my head. I advise you to be very careful of what you say. Several counterattacks were carried out successfully in Normandy. Panzer divisions east of Rhone were able to break through the enemy bridgehead and they suffered heavy casualties. And the British landing force also has been thrown back in the camp area with massive losses. And Is that all? Uh, yes, Führer, from the dispatches. Although I see General Rohn is back with us now after his trip to the front. Well, so much for Normandy. What's happening in the east? During the past 24 hours, a new offensive was launched by the enemy. In the Karelian Straits. Where? The Karelian Straits, Führer. The railway station, Perkiarvi, was badly hit. Several cities, Seivöster, Uzi, Kirko, and Kanieljärvi, had to be abandoned. One last time, gentlemen. Marcel's group comes in from the east, quietly, takes up positions north and south of the barracks, and holds there. Our group, Trojan Horse Group, makes its way uneventfully from the gate to the kitchen. Is the truck ready? Yes, as you order. Okay. Marcel, very important. Once we're inside the German garrison, no firing until we blow the ammunition dumps. C'est clair, oui? Okay, clear. All right. Lafart, what's the latest count? I, I was able to find 20 more men. 20? That makes 86. More than enough to do the job. Yeah. Gentlemen. Let's go. You too, Leslie. Just wait till the bloody Jerry's get a taste of this poor eh, Leslie? <laughs>
Just go around it. There is no room. I said go around it. Natalie, it's true. The Americans and the British are landing in France. Great numbers. They're driving on Cherbourg. The BBC. Goldberg heard it on the radio in the Dresden barracks. What's the matter? They told me to report to SS headquarters tomorrow morning at 8. They told me at the Mica factory. With Lewis. That's probably a warning. You are the only one of your group that hasn't been transported, Natalie. Yes, it must be a warning. Why would they want me to bring Lewis? Well, you took him with you last time. The adjutant probably remembers that. That's all it is, I'm sure. A serious warning. Have you heard from Beryl yet? They say it may take more than a week to reach him. This is most important. You must be humble and contrite and promise that you'll cooperate for the future in every way. And keep your spirits up, my dear. That's crucial.
You are the dirty little Jewish whore who has been plotting against the German government. Yeah? Well, are you or aren't you? Take the dirty little bastard away from her. Oh, mommy! 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 I was insane, I was misled. I will cooperate. Please don't hurt my face. Don't touch your babies. Gone, you stupid little bitch. Don't you realize that? And that is for the bloody garbage she will be in just one minute. And you will clean it up yourself. Oh, you thought you could get away with it, did you? Oh, you filthy Jewish plotting and scheming. He is dead. Gone, Heinel. Tear him apart. Attack commandant. Oh, these Jewesses are all the same. Go on, let her have a fight. Get away from me! Mommy! Think of the dirty Jew come near me? Save it for your uncle, the Talmud rabbi. Get up on your feet. Now, listen to me, you sow. When the Red Cross arrives, you will be the guide in the children's department. And you will make a very fine impression. And they will write you up in their reports. And you will be a very happy American Jewess. And the children's pavilion will be your pride uh, and joy. Of course, of course. And the Red Cross of War, if you have misbehaved in any way, you will be brought back here with your brat and hind with red wing too before your very eyes, and you will clear up the bloody mess and take it to the crematorium. Then, after that, you will be taken to a P.O.W. For the room to two hundred stinking Ukrainians will have you one after another for a week. And if your whole carcass can survive all of this, we'll be taken to the little fortress and shot. You understand? Oh, what do you mean? You say 
stomach. Oh, and to follow Bridget. And if you say a word of this to your <laughs> uncle, to anybody else, any of this, you will be <laughs> kaput. <laughs> Do you believe in me? Get her out of here! Come on, out! Burial. They're going to try. <laughs> 